couldn't think of the word. Space helicopters. So That's they right. show up with those. They blow the bejesus out of everything. Yeah, they and kill everybody. They kill everybody. Mila Jovovich is like, you know, she she takes out uh, she takes out a helicopter uh, with a uh, sawed off shotgun with pennies with in pennies in it. In it. <laughs> well, takes out whatever. takes out the helicopter. It crashes into the frigate, blows her into the water, and then she wakes. Yes. Then she wakes up. The first sorry, not the first yeah. time, but you know that really horribly looking, the kind of weird looking blonde chick with the spandex and the thing attached. Oh, to Jill Valentine. That couldn't yeah. act worth <laughs> the fuck out. Yeah. How did she not die during that? I have no idea, but anyway. So like, she gets blown she gets blown into the water. Does it, okay, does the spandex melt? Yes, but just okay. hang on a second. You were arguing the logic of a Resident Evil movie. Just Yeah. So, okay, go <laughs> on. I'll stop. <laughs> it's like, so it's she, like trying to argue the physics from, a, from one of the transporter movies. Exactly. So <laughs> she wakes she wakes up in this room and uh Jill she's, Valentine or Bill uh, Alice. Alice. She wakes up in this room and she's wearing the obligatory paper gown that she seems to be wearing in every movie that she wakes that was up. That's kind of cool, actually, because it looked like it was like a piece of like cardboard paper with a string and then another piece of cardboard paper. Because that's a good way to dress your prisoners. In yeah. ways, it was literally like watching The Fifth Element. Yeah, pretty much. But anyway, the exact same wake-up scene and the flail and the screaming. So they... oh, oh, and they started the movie with a flashback because technically that was a fucking flashback. Yeah, technically. Yeah, the they, 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 the yeah they, start, they start the credits. Yeah, so the credits. directors from G.I. Joe <laughs> okay. made a Resident Evil movie. Well, no, the, the opening credits, they start with her in the water, and then all of a sudden it start, she starts oh, rising yeah. to the top. It was oh. And the entire credit sequence is reverse. The, act, the, the reverse action scene of the people attacking the umbrella. It was attacking a reverse the reverse slow mo flashback. flashback. And then as soon as. <laughs> As soon as it got to the end of the credits, in high def 3D. Yeah, as soon as it got to the end of the credits, it starts up again, and you go through the entire action yeah. scene again <laughs> in forward motion this time. But it still looks unconvincing. <laughs> Look, we we still got ten minutes <laughs> to fill in this movie. How can we add ten minutes to this movie? I, I can't believe you didn't put the extra ten minutes in the script. I don't know. Uh, we'll just run it backwards with the credits on it. It'll be fine. Well, the glowing letter thing, slow reveal, had been done too many times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But no, she doesn't just wake up wearing paper. Before that, she wakes up as a housewife. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Which was another flashback. I don't know. Right. No, if anybody has seen any of the other Resident Evil movies and the whole cloning oh, Alice. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> We're breaking up. Zach, 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 Zach is breaking Hit the reboot button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get a fan on and most sisters are trying. <laughs> yeah, anybody who's seen the cloning process in any of these Resident Evil oh. movies. Um, yeah, they're, they're going with that whole thing. So she wakes up in this facility, which was in uh, Siberia or was Russia or something like that. It was Russia. It, it was, was Russia. Russia. Yeah, under a frozen lake. Yeah, it was, a, okay, it was underwater. I swear to God, I was waiting for the robotic shrub to start fucking swimming around. Okay, now I'm the back of the raving on the back. Somebody stop him. Let me in. Somebody strap his helmet on. He's going autistic. Okay. Don't oh, show no, your tongue. It's not worth it. This is, I got to go back to this housewife thing really quick. She does a scene where she has a deaf child and she gets attacked by zombies and she saves the child, but then she dies, but then she wakes up with Alice. Okay, continue. This yes. is foreshadowing for later suck assery. Yeah. So she wakes up in this facility. They're doing experiments on her. And um, then all of a sudden, the power goes out. And. She's been released from the cell. So. After being given a leather suit. suit. Yeah, after being given a leather suit. Yeah. In the interrogation, don't forget about the random interrogation of the fucking Joel, what's her fucking nuts name? Joel Yeah, Valentine. well, yeah, well, that's what the experiment I, I, I heard season, I'm already confused. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I, the, no, I know she, you during the movie. <laughs> I looked at Longer and said, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm a reasonably intelligent yeah. human being. Yeah. This is just oh, so she so she wakes she wakes up gets into the hallway after the security goes down she runs down this huge lit hallway. How do people who like Honey Boo Boo watch a movie like this and follow what's going on? Anyway, she runs down a long hallway. These doors open. I think up. it actually makes sense to them. Uh -oh. These doors open up, and all of a sudden she's in the middle of downtown Tokyo. Oh yeah. Wait, yeah. she was under a lake in Russia. No, it gets better. Get uh, <laughs> the entire underwater facility, which was a apparently a nuclear uh, submarine 
uh, base. For the Ruskies. For the Ruskies. Because, yeah. you know, the Ruskies need a submarine base under a frozen lake in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> a little. Yeah, anyway, keep going. Uh, That's actually So how do, okay, so the, umbrella cor- the Umbrella Corporation has turned this entire facility into a testing facility. A simulation. A simulation. They have built exact repu- replicas of about four blocks of downtown Tokyo, uh, downtown New York, Russia. like Times Square, um, Russia, and suburban areas to run tests on. And they were using it also as a showroom to sell the virus. Yes, to sell the virus as well. To the Russians, who then they, because they're afraid the... Uh, oh, I thought the world was gone and eaten by no, zombies. No, this was before. This is before. This, this was, was before. before. This is before them. See, the virus got out into the public, they were originally going to weaponize it and just use it in control. They were going to sell it to the Russians because, because the Americans were going to have it. And, and then they, they sold, sold it to the Americans because the Russians were going to have it. And the Chinese and the Japs and all that shit. Anyway. Yeah. Everyone bought it and got loose and that was the whole apocalypse that happened. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much. Okay, keep going. So, this <laughs> no, this was not fun. <laughs> Dak is just broken, but... It's okay. <laughs> but pretty much, pretty much the entire... Pretty much the entire premise of this movie is escaping from this facility. There's this team that goes in. Uh, okay, the yeah. team. I love these guys that showed up. Yeah, these were like these like pretty boy, fucking like the lead guy was a pretty boy, fucking blonde haired, masculine Jack guy running around in like tight jeans or some shit. And he had like short hair, and then your two bangs. The two bangs. <laughs> Apparently, that made him sexy. According to my girlfriend, I won't go into that. And then there's the Russian guy, with the, you know, the random Russian guy. Yeah. And then there was the fucking dumb big oaf dude that killed everything. Yeah. Wasn't there a black guy? Yeah, there yeah, was a black, black guy. The black guy. Yeah. The black guy. <laughs> I love how he died, by the way. Anyway, we'll go into that later. No, we won't. No, no, no we won't. We're not done yet. Shut up. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. I mean, if, you yeah. want, if you want to continue, we, we have to oh. embrace the suck. I can't even tell how many cast members we have. GDM's broken. Yeah, we got one down. We almost got back. I'm trying to close my own eyes, but it didn't work. Keep going. Uh, I don't even remember where we were. How <laughs> <laughs> she gets chased down a long... No, the team, the attack team arrived with the, with the special adventurers. And she runs out into Tokyo, gets chased by zombies, and runs back, back into the, the laser hallway. The laser hallway. And does a five-minute fight sequence without the lasers coming back on. Yeah, you know, I never even thought of that. <laughs> I did. You <laughs> thought! <laughs> the whole movie could have ended right there. That that crazy, creepy robot chick bitch that was, that was right. the drone. Yeah, All right. she could have done was push the big red button that said laser on it and killed her. <laughs> And then we would have been done. I would have not had to waste another hour and a half of my life. Because it's like right at the beginning of the movie, too. Yeah. This all happened within the first 15 minutes of the movie. It was. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what's That's that only 15. Were... How long is this film? An hour and a half. And Don't course... tell me anymore. Don't tell me anymore. Yeah, I thought that sucked. No, no, no. It gets worse. I still love, I still love to the whole Hollywood magic, magical eye of a limited am- ammunition like gig. Okay, she had a 45 caliber handgun and two clips, and she killed like 40 zombies with it. Yeah. Okay, now I thought it again. I'm sorry, but I had to. I couldn't help myself. No, yeah. no, she killed half of them with a bike lock chain. Right? Oh, yeah, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. There's a little schoolgirl's bike and had a big fuck yeah. off chain on it. Yeah, like yeah. a big fucking biker chain. With a lot. <laughs> with a lot that we saw. Someone managed half. not to hit herself in the face <laughs> with it. <laughs> I totally would have hit myself in the yeah. face with it. And she does all of these wonderful magical flips and moves and all that without her superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? So really, yeah. what's the point of giving her superpower? Yeah, which when she, she gets back at the end of the movie. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> okay, so keep going. But wait, wait, wait what? <laughs> this, <laughs> so that was that was downtown why? Tokyo. Why? 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 The, the, spe- the, spe- the special <laughs> team coming in to extract her gets down into the middle of. Downtown Moscow, their simulation area. Yeah. Somehow they just walked in. Somehow they just walked into this place. Yeah, out of out of nowhere. But, underneath the lake. Yeah, <laughs> underneath the lake. Yeah. But anyway, so they, they get down there and all of a sudden they start getting shot at. <laughs> yeah. There's it turns out guns. there it turns out there's an entire platoon of dead zombie Ruskies. Uh, Ruskies. That are neon blue. Yeah, neon blue. Yeah, they they're are because they're bold. You know, when I first saw it, it actually reminded me of that like zombie Nazi movie that was out a while. Oh, uh, Dead Snow. Yeah, they yeah. look almost identical. Yeah, but we're we're talking like full on 
uh, Russian military uniforms too. Were well, they Russian uniforms blue? No. no. They were green. They were green. And these guys are literally driving cars, driving motorcycles, and shooting guns at these guys. They have stormtrooper aim. That have stormtrooper aim. Yeah. The zombies were driving cars? Yes. Well, I don't know if they were zombies or if they were like half They're never been really zombie. They're all just disease mutants. Yeah. They act like zombies. They want to kill you. That's always been the Resident Evil. I never really understand why they call them zombies. Because they're, they're, they're dead and they're not dead, I guess. So apparently because these zombies have shitty aim, they decide that they're going to release another bio-weapon. Bio-hazard, yeah. Yeah, oh, bio-hazard. So heard the, the, they had to kill the same monster three, three times. times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the first two times took a huge battle. The last time took two, two shots times. to the head. Yeah. This, thing was, yeah. this thing was the size of, like, a small elephant. Well, I was a bit bigger than that. Okay, a big elephant. Well, uh, an elephant. Yeah. It's about oh, the size oh, oh, of an elephant. elephant. And... This thing like literally ran down, ran past cars and everything else, and for some strange reason couldn't catch what the hell was it that they were driving. Um, oh, it was uh, uh, a Rolls Royce. It was a Rolls Royce, yeah. yeah. For some reason they couldn't catch a Rolls Royce. They Wait, could knock over all the military vehicles, no problem. Because Rolls Royce painted that plane yeah. during the uh, the plane. Yeah. 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 Rolls Royce also had the underlighting. Yeah, the blue underlight. Because yeah. everybody in Russia drives fucking Rolls Royces with neon lights underneath. And at this point, point, hasn't the world already been dead for like 15, 20 years? Well, this was a simulation, so it can't be great whatever she wants. Yeah. Right? yeah. So for some reason, that came to her mind. Now, backtrack a little bit to when she was in the North American suburbia simulation. Yeah. She runs well, no, this was going on in the second time. Oh, no, no. Time. Well, yeah, yeah. true. But she had already found the so, kid. Yeah, she, she, runs, the kid. she runs into the deaf kid. The deaf kid looks at her and goes, I love you, Mommy. Where have you been? And she goes, oh, sure, I'm your mom now. I'm going to let everyone else die, but I'll keep you safe. Even though you're a clone in a simulation, and would have allowed you to shoot you in the fucking face. <laughs> Not to mention how they stumbled on a cloning facility, blew up the entire base, and then end up at the White House for the last humanity's last stand, they could have used all those clones as oh, cannon fodder. I love the, I love the clone thing, too, which goes, she's like, you're not really my mommy, are you? <laughs> That's why I almost pissed myself laughing. Like, well, actually, you must know, technically, you're not really my daughter. Yeah, you're not real. And yeah. you know what I love, too? Sorry, not to, but I was going to say, when she was trapped in the little prison interrogation thing at the beginning, how magically, when she got released, like, Clothing appeared and like a weapon, and a gun come out or some yeah, shit. Yeah, a little. No, no, she didn't, she, didn't, she didn't get a gun. She didn't get a gun. Whatever. Uh, but why would you keep clothing in an interrogation cell for her just to conveniently put on? And of course, it was tight latex. Fucking like, show off her ass. Shit. Well, of course. Well, yeah. Okay, that would be spit from a movie. That's a little bit of license. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's so that when they turn into a video game, it makes sense. Let's yes. please move on. No, no, but I want to tell you how the black guy died. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he went through the whole movie kicking ass, killing yeah. shit. He, he was awesome. awesome. He got punched in the chest, and his heart stopped. That was it. He was dead. <laughs> yeah. The black guy always has to die. Yeah. Because so, brothers it, have heart problems. I don't know. This was a stupid movie. <laughs> well, what it was is that Mexican, what's her name? The Mexican girl, Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. she, she injected back. one of those fucking creepy bug things that turned her mute. She became invincible somehow. Um, they had this huge brawl. The, the black guy and the blonde guy. Okay, they punched. Against, she punched him in the chest. Yeah, oh, oh. And then, like, they <laughs> took, like, a hundred fucking punches from this chick and was fine. And, like, beat the shit out of her, kind of. And then she, like, smiled, punched him in the chest, and he died. <laughs> you know, he did kick ass a lot in that movie. He was, he was very, I guess very it was this time for your brothers. It was just a, it was a bad movie. movie. I know, but I'm just like, <laughs> We I like watching you sweat. <laughs> Why do you think when I came in here right at the beginning of the show, I brought up Lydia? Just to see this. <laughs> now, see, the sad part is the first one wasn't that bad. Really. No, you want to know the sad part is I paid 21 bucks to go see that fucking thing. What? Well, for two people. <laughs> Did you get blown at least? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going into that. <laughs> oh, I guess he not. smiled. For the record, he smiled. Turn towards the camera. Show your expression. <laughs> well, we're gonna have fun with this thing. <laughs> Once we get it figured out. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, but yes, all in all, it was a big speaking pile of shit, which I wish I could never. I'm never gonna be able to get that hour and a half. I like that. But it was in 3D. 
even moving towards this guy, he approached the cop car and proceeded to tell the cop to go fuck himself. <laughs> wow. I love it when they don't even make it hard for him. It's, it's, it's even better. The cop way. actually, I honestly think the cop was like at first going like, well, where's the camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I allowed to taser him? I don't know. Is this a game show? <laughs> it's a test. It's a no test. test. <laughs> Am I, am I off kilter? Was is this this reasonable or like? No, the guy's a douchebag and and is asking. The thing is, is that like it wasn't even. It was a normal looking vehicle. It was normal looking. It was like a grocery getter kind of half SUV, half normal car, and it was the only bumper sticker on the entire car. It was his midlife crisis. Have you ever noticed that there seems to be this stronger thing, like people that aren't even like, you know, really anti-authoritarian. Sometimes they're, fuck the police. Because it's cool, man. Yeah, this is the new thing. It's like this well, anti-authoritarian idiot. I think what it helps to is most people feel like they're absolutely nothing. Most of the people are nothing. That's just the fact of existence. So they feel that they, to compensate for this, for their own insecurities, they have to lash out at what they perceive that makes them feel small. Yes. And, this authority and, makes the people feel like they have no control over their lives. I because. honestly think just because of the look of the car and the type of person, like it was your average, like take the kids to school, grocery dinner. I think they thought it was funny. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Like it seemed like it would be the kind of car that somebody. This is right. This is the, this is the, for some people's taste. The, this is the, the count of well, there's people who listen to us. Exactly. This is like a white yeah. kid at Sharks Club wearing a fuck the police T-shirt. Yeah. This is exactly what it is. There's this very strong. I have a guy that comes into my bar that has it, it, it's a black hat and it just has the white lettering that just says fuck. Yeah. Uh, which you know okay, whatever that's fine. But he's actually taking one of the felt the the white paint markers and wrote cops under the brim of his hat, and he comes in all the time, and he wears the hat backwards, and he just walks around. So you'll never see them coming exactly from behind. Kid. No, no, we had the BPD doing a walkthrough, <laughs> and the cop just looks at the kid, and I look at the kid, and the cop just does this, and I facepalm, <laughs> and the cop chuckles, <laughs> and leaves, 
and, and then uh, I go, I actually grabbed the kid, pulled him out, threw him out the door, and the cop is standing there going, <laughs> <laughs> I and I like wave at the cop, he's like, <laughs> For those of you who are listening to this, <laughs> the cop basically did the fingers, you're cool. Yeah. <laughs> he did the fondy. He did the My tale this week actually involves the police walk through at my bar, so I'm going to grab Jimmy's. Jimmy's, yeah. uh, I'm sorry for the public, I need to go pick up my wife because I have to sleep tonight. <laughs> and because I have to at some point close my eyes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, speaking about wives, my wife so, uh, wants you to take your other bottle. Yes. No, your other bottle. <laughs> okay, I've got the bottle. Yeah. bottle? Cave troll out. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. You're fired. Well, he is me and Seacrest. Yeah. <laughs> you would kill Seacrest. Fuck yeah, I would. Yeah, I do. Toodles. See you soon. <laughs> I'm going to go gay something up now. <laughs> you just missed the captain's fist pump. There you go. <laughs> See you, Internet. Have fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, so um, I'm DJing at Jimmy's, and uh, did I mention the story about Starbucks in the last show? Yes, you did. Okay, well, for anyone who missed the last show, brief recap, I heard a story from a friend that uh, people were getting tickets at a Starbucks drive through for using their phones to pay for their coffee. Which is so there's a, there's a phone app, you go up to the thing, you're in the drive through and you go click, and you hold up this little thing to the screen, and it allows you to, it deducts money that you put into your phone's account for Starbucks. So it's like having a Starbucks card that's your phone. Yeah. So, so you get, how, how can they, what are they ticketing for? Using well, your they, phone while using your phone while driving is what they were ticketing people for. But I didn't not think on that, a public road. that was the first thing I said. There was a, the, there's a bunch of other things, and we've all agreed this is a dumb idea. Can the story allow her to continue? So... Friday night, it's relatively dead after 12.30 most nights, but that night it was fucking dead. Like, it was the staff cleaning and two guys that were just paying their bills when two cops come in for a walkthrough. And the one guy's, you know, kind of young, kind of like just looking around, trying to pretend like he's working. The other guy's an old, pretty, yeah, an old pro, old salty dog, and he comes in and he's looking around, so what's the story with this place? You know, what the hell happened? You know, and, and the, Oh, you know, we usually close up at 1 o'clock, and, oh, okay. Um, so they're chit-chatting, and they're sharing a few jokes. The bartender, Pat, and this older cop kind of joking around. Pat wanders off to do something, and I seize the opportunity, and kind of walk up beside the guy, and I'm like, hey, can I ask you a strange question? Oh, yeah, sure. So I tell him this story, and I say, you know, I don't understand how someone could be getting a ticket for using their phone for its intended purpose to let a complete stop in a drive through And he's trying to say, well, why would they even be using their phone? I mean, if you're texting in a drive through yes, you can get a ticket because you are operating a motor vehicle while using your phone. But in that case, your vehicle is in drive, you're in motion, whatever. Yeah. The whole private property shit doesn't apply. Like, think if you get an accident in the parking lot, cops still show up, right? That's how he explained it. But I explained to him, well, no, this is, it's like having a Tim's card, but the Tim's card is your phone. And he instantly, like, you see the light bulb go off, you know, the equation. You used his language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I translated for him. He goes, oh, oh, well, that's cool. Why the fuck would anyone, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, <yeah>, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he says, why? And he's like, you can see him kind of like get that like you get when you get confused and angry, that, that stuttering, like, wait, what, huh? What, really? What? Okay, number one, there's no reason they should be getting a ticket for that. Number two, common fucking sense says that anyone who disputes that ticket is going to, you win. know, win. And this is the best part up until this point. We've kind of been talking like normal people, like moderate volume levels. But number three, I would beat the shit out of the cop that gave me that <laughs> ticket. <laughs> nice. <laughs> From the top. <laughs> for those of you on our hangout and for those of you on the air, uh, my wife just walked in, so say yeah. hello, wifey. Hello, wifey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in there. 
Yeah, that was my, my top story. I have one more later, but I'll pass it off. All right, I have one from Surrey. Uh, okay. Yay! <laughs> Always good fodder. All right, so uh, I'm going to school at SFU. They have three different campuses. One of them is in Surrey. Unfortunately, I have to take classes there this semester. I'm sorry. Not repeating that mistake next semester. It is a silly statue mall in Surrey. No. Uh, oh, yeah. Fun times. So I'm on the fifth floor waiting for my class to start. I'm sorry. And I, I, you can stop saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm leaning up on the rail, looking over down to the mall from the fifth floor up, because, hey, Vertigo's fun. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find some <laughs> And I'm spying on the scum that walks around the walls in Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> that was well done. <laughs> and I, well brought up would be better to <laughs> And eventually I start chatting with this one girl who's there early as well, just talking to me, what would happen if we kind of fell off the edge? What would that look like? Where would the balloons fall? Which store would be the most affected? You know, <laughs> typical overly stressed university discussion. Yeah. <laughs> and this one guy shows up that she obviously knows from somewhere else, and she kind of turns, hey, what's up? And we both look down, and he's not wearing any shoes. <laughs> what? <laughs> and she goes, dude, you're, you're not wearing any shoes. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I turned to her like, you're... Not wearing your shoes. What, what what happened? You're not wearing your shoes. See, that's like the time I wasn't wearing any pants. Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he goes to explain that his flip flops fell apart when he was walking to school. Okay. And he's like, "All right. Now why didn't you go and fix this? Because if you follow me, look down there. That's a mall. You know what they have in mall?" Shoes. Shoes. <laughs> yes, but students don't have money. Right. <laughs> well, so it's, it's worth case that Stephen didn't want to go back down the five flights of stairs. Oh, wait. The, I've tried to incentivize things to it. You're walking barefoot at Surrey Central. You know the aids per you know meter square here is frightening? <laughs> You're taking your life into your own hands. Okay. Now, he said he didn't want to walk back down. Which meant that he was there so and just walked up. Walk up. Yes. Now, what store would actually serve him if he wasn't wearing shoes? Well, that's that. This is a point he raised. <laughs> Obvious shoe store. Well, no, because shoe stores Here's will not. Sale. Well, they won't do it because you're not wearing your shoes. So if you don't buy the shoes, they have to clean the shoes um, because you have no socks. No shirt, no shoes, no service. But if you go to a dollar store, you can buy two dollar flip flops, and that's not a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. But he's like, yeah, I don't want to go down there. Like, at some point, you have to walk outside at Surrey Central with no shoes. Better to do it while the shops are open. Yes, business class goes until 7.30 at night. Uh, you know, I well, just... Now, this kid's supposed to be one of our smart elite. And, you know, no. He's in a 100-level class. He hasn't proved that yet. <laughs> Anyone can take a 100-level course. The office oh, yeah. <laughs> Once you get to the three hundred level courses, that's stupid. But then there's there's some questions that need to be asked. And you get pushed off the fifth floor. <laughs> and, and well, it's important to describe what this kid looks. Like. He's about five foot seven, average height. He's wearing uh, those kind of uh, cargo pants that are multiple cargo pants stitched together. Yes. And he has a very curly white fro that's blonde. So he's got some very unfortunate ancestral background there. <laughs> and he's. <laughs> He's a ginger kid, mine is a ginger. <laughs> and he flip-flops. He's very tall mixed with a hipster. Yeah. <laughs> Mention where flip-flops, I'm sorry. Particularly not in public. No. <laughs> but the thing is, the girl he knows is this smoking hot redhead with kind of the supermodel figure, but the way supermodels should look with actual curves and that kind of thing. I'm like, he looks like that. He knows her. He's that stupid. That makes her look smart. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a beard. <laughs> Good week. That was the correct use of the word. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> you look really sad for a second. No, I'm confused. I didn't get it. A beard is a term for, say you're gay or secretly gay and, and you, you have a really hot, hot girl. Girl, girl with you. It's called a beard. It's also the same thing for, say, a lesbian who has a quote unquote boyfriend. It is. She's keeping a stupid guy around to make her look more academic in the academic environment. Good point. That's that's actually pretty clever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, because she was raised in Surrey, but it's clearly well, she's one of the better achieving students in the class, so she's trying to not appear a Surrey girl. She's trying to get out. Yes. <laughs> and she's in university. None of the I students... didn't think anybody actually tried to get out of there. Well, see, none of the students in, in the Surrey campus are from Surrey. Well, so nobody pulls out of there. 
<laughs> well, anyway, any else you have some voice else to go with this story? Well, I saw him later, about four hours later, and I said, You still do not have shoes! <laughs> He's like, Yeah, I know, I'm gonna go home now. On the bus? I, 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 apparently, you took transit because you didn't try and you questioned the fact you're going on public transit with no shoes earlier, so I would assume that means he does take transit. Mm hmm. I don't want to wear shoes on transit. It's, it's I know how I want to wear a bio suit when I'm on transit. I don't take transit. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I've seen the people from my that's, You know, that's not, I, I don't, I'm going to argue this, and I know I'm going to get arguments right away. That's not a tale of the stupid. That's a suicide attempt. <laughs> that's a cry for help. That, that's a cry for help. I would, I would actually disagree with that and go so far as to say it was an attempt on Darwinism. I think people will, you know, comment and reason don't beat up people at Surrey Central if given like their knuckles might cut and they'll get AIDS by punching them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's walking around barefoot. Yeah, I know. I, I played kick the needle on that place, which is just that so, like, It's my, my job and man's job. We have to rest crack is. I need punching them. <laughs> is it possible? Is, is it possible to give someone at least an honorable mention um, for you know going for a Darwin Award in slow motion? Maybe. <laughs> I don't well, maybe, maybe, maybe I think he's a cry for help. I really do. Well, I, <laughs> if he is going in slow motion, maybe it's just a you know proof that actually that the intelligent factor actually contributes to how fast they're going to work. They work. You mean you have to? If you're so stupid at some point, it actually takes longer. Mm -hmm. Dragging it out, making it more okay, more guys, painful. Guys, you're thinking way too hard. Even <laughs> creating a TV series like Honey Boo Boo. But see, there are be <laughs> rich. <laughs> but that doesn't work with Fozziage. People have driven cars across RPG warheads and blown themselves up. I mean, yeah. that, that's pretty bloody stupid. Or throwing cigarette butts into uh, fuel like shell refinery fuel yeah. tanks. I mean, all right, my tale. Yeah, that's military. That's a different. Okay. Now, I promised a couple of people I would actually tell this story, so I'm definitely going to get this story out. This week. Now, this did not happen this weekend. Despite having a bad weekend, I had no real trouble, other than the guy I mentioned who we had a call to yeah. the cops for, and, and he managed to talk himself into the back of the crew cruiser. Um, last weekend, and this actually involves Mr. Mayhem in some small way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, not that late. It's about maybe eight. No, so it was about uh, ten or twelve o'clock because uh, it wasn't really that late for, for anything. Wasn't really anything going on, and uh, I see Mr. Mayhem at my front door of the hotel waving at me. And I go out, and he's he's going. I thought maybe you wanted to come over and see. And I'm like, what? He says, we're out here dealing with something. Apparently, him and uh, Uncle, uh, Fester. Uncle Fester had seen an individual. So drunk, he got up from his table, walked outside, and collapsed. So they go over. They're they're going to deal with it before they can. However, two other guests or customers from Denny's pick the guy up. No, no idea why. And then they walk off in the distance across the uh, the parking lot. Was a drunken kidnapping. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. To, to be honest, uh, Uncle Fester actually thought they were going to roll him. Oh, but apparently what had happened was, and this we finally got out of him, although you had left at this point, is that he had told them that he had been at Sharks and needed to go home and he had to get to the bus station. So they were going to help him towards the bus uh, station, the, so the bus kiosk, when he started to throw up on himself and he couldn't really walk. So they left him on the side of the road in disgust and went off to Sharks themselves. Took a while to find. So anyhow, before that, Uncle Fester and Mr. Mayhem here had gone over and found the guy puking on himself, and then he would collapse and kind of roll in the vomit, and would just kind of lie there. And so I walk over, get a whiff of it, and I am just—I've already been having a bad night at this point. And so I did my usual, where I complained and I kind of bitched about this this job. I just really got to find real work because this this is thing. And Uncle Fester decided to fuck with me. It's like, what? You would miss this. And he starts talking about all the other people who have left. And he says, look, look, look at Mayhem here. He can't wait to get back in. That's why he had to come over. Mayhem took one look at me walking up, by the way, and said, well, you're here. Goodbye. 
So I, I go over there and I'm just like, fuck my life. Just totally fuck my life. There's there's no reason why an adult male of, of seriously, of my intelligence, my education should be dealing with this shit at almost 50 years of age. Fuck this shit. And I'm, I'm kind of having one of my little rants and, and, and moods. And Uncle Fester is writing me about this. So finally we, we've called the cops because this guy cannot literally move. He can't even stand on his own. He is, and he's just just continuously puking on himself. Where is it all coming from? <laughs> well, literally at one point, it was literally running down the road. Like river. Wherever a river was the drain. Oh, right? oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've seen that before. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the cop comes, takes one look at him and just uh, yeah, we need a wagon. Uh, just yeah, we need an ambulance. Yeah, yeah, we have we have somebody down in Barry Hill. <laughs> probably thinking, yes, and he passes off the paramedics. Yes. Yeah. So the paramedics finally get there. Paramedics take one look at him and they're like, oh, <laughs> whoa, and they look over at us and then with this desperation in their eyes, they go, would you like to give us a hand? <laughs> and I look at Uncle Fester. He's still kind of grimacing and looking at this kid. But he's grinning because he's been fucking me over for the last little while. And I say, we'd love to. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) Double take from Uncle Fester. (laughs) So the paramedic very quickly reaches into his pocket, pulls out a pair of gloves and hands them to me. And I hand one pair to to Uncle Fester. Now remember, I used to do this all the time. I've handled every human body fluid you can think of, and yes, including that, and we won't talk about that. (laughs) And pull the gloves on, and they're like, yeah, you're going to need to take your shirt off. And I'm like, we have no problem doing that. (laughs) And Fester is like, literally, he is like now trying, because we're in gloves, right? (laughs) And he is fighting to keep all of this in. (laughs) So we have to unbutton his shirt. And peel it off of him. And I like fold it up and I'm like, have you got a bag? And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me a second. <laughs> Pulls it open, I drop the bag, the shirt in. And Fester and I then have to pick this kid up. Well, he's still like, oh, I drool, vomit, just hanging down in strings. We drop him onto the gurney, we lift his legs up. He just kind of curls into a fetal position. We put the blanket over him, and he's like, the last little residues. And, and, and as it was, Fester looked down, and said, oh, what'd you have, spaghetti? And it's like, the kids, oh, it's, it's, oh yeah, it's Chinese. <laughs> and I said, my one piece of advice to you is, from now on, try chewing. <laughs> and uh, so that's how I got even with Uncle Fester. <laughs> the most great is I was at Denny's the day this happened. Yes, yeah, so there. I come in so and I've got like this shit eating grin on my face. <laughs> you sat down, crossed your arms, like I have a story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm there with um, the pun meister and um, I just call it the sucks. <laughs> and they're eating still. Yeah, and I proceed to tell, and I'm like, and this kid just brought up everything, and then the kid is like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> you should turn the hand off food to me. Like, oh, I'm good. I'm going to eat. I'm fine. Mind you, Denny's kind of has that effect on most people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, so then we, when we, by the way, when we were finished with that, I went in, sat down, and ordered a half order of nachos, nachos. right in front of Uncle Fester, who comes in and he's like, how the fuck can you do that? And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs>
Like what? Like what have I done? I'll figure that... something out. <laughs> so after the conversation we had uh, earlier this week, did you actually Google how to paint a fence so you wouldn't smash it? Oh, it was not the fence. <laughs> that was my phone I was talking about. Uh -huh. Well, no wonder it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I had to paint the fence over the weekend, and it was just it, my sciatic nerve ended up bothering me by the end of it. So, and everyone thought I was talking about painting the fence. I was talking about my phone. Long story short. Anyway, never mind. Wait, are we actually talking about painting like an actual fence? Like yes, that? like behind you, outside there, the fence. Oh, I had to paint it. That fence. <laughs> okay, I thought there was like some sort of metaphor. No, I had to not. <laughs> I was painting the fence this week. Ooh, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Did you use lube? A smartphone is only as smart as the operator. Um, I love you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> so that was the Pleasure. Woohoo! <laughs> Anyhow, next, moving along. Anyone else got a tale of the stupid? Nope. Yes, you got a second one. I, I have another one. Okie dokie, let's hear it. Oh, I was looking for you guys. You got stuff. Does no one else have a tale of the stupid? What makes you think we got well, stuff? You have nothing to tell working what you do now as an LPL? I don't want to. He does. I got a couple. You're not allowed? Some stuff with Crown Council and stuff that hasn't gone through. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. You can't talk about it if it's actually going to be going for prosecution. Yeah, I got a couple that aren't going to prosecution that I can talk about. Okay. Um, okay, well, for, uh, I think it was the last episode. Um, I was talking about the, the grocery store, the crab incident. Yeah. Same grocery store, working there last, uh, yeah, it was this past, this past, <laughs> uh, I think Saber just found it himself. You no, know, he just kicked my sofa and he just broke his toe. I know I need it, right? Like that <laughs> weird spot between your kneecaps. Oh, 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 your knee funny bone. Yeah. <laughs> you you know, that's something. Uh, it was a weird little squeak that came out of me, too. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I kind of have to go too. I got to get up in less than eight hours. So okay. Well, uh, I'm just gonna do my story, but yeah, whatever. Um, fuck your story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You leave. Yeah. So I will see you two later. Well, it was nice having you, and uh, we will see you next week. I haven't actually time. had you yet. But, huh? I haven't actually had you yet, but it'll be time. Huh? What? Nice. I said it was nice having you, and so he says I haven't actually had you yet, but it'll be time. <laughs> well, yeah, it was bound to happen eventually. <laughs> yeah, they were roommates. What's this here? Tell yourself that the fact that you can and required diagrams of dolls. <laughs> this is he's a special boy. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> so. But the one thing he is known for that he takes every time that he's in there is a side of halibut. <laughs> so he's been he's been dubbed oh, that he's, he's, he's a routine shoplifter. Yes. <laughs> so he has been dubbed the halibut. What store? No, I know you can't say the actual store, but what city district is this store in? Maple Ridge. Halibut thief. Yeah. In Maple Ridge. In Maple Ridge. Go on. So anyway, he has been he has been caught on camera and by staff, and he has been banned from the store. So technically, I don't have to have any reason whatsoever to grab this guy. Yeah, he just he don't... just has to set foot in the store, and I put him under arrest for trespassing. Trespassing, yes, easy enough. So he gets the, he gets down there, and before I could uh, I just literally just come down the stairs to start my shift. It was at about 9 o'clock in the morning. I just started, just started my shift. I come down the stairs. And who's using the public phone over by the door called a taxi? But halibut thief. But halibut thief. So I'm like, oh, boy, I get to take this guy down. Fun, fun. So I start going over there. And all of a sudden, one of the managers pops up and around the corner. Grabs him. I'm like, fuck! <laughs> 
no, I can't do anything because the manager is going to throw him out. Yeah. So the manager is standing there screaming at him. Yeah. I told you you're not supposed to be in here and blah, 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 and everything else. And probably the best reference I could think of, I thought about it all weekend, probably the best reference I could think of is this. Anybody who has seen the movie My Cousin Vinny, yeah. remember the scene where they decided that they were going into, uh, after all the um, witness testimony and everything, they're going into trial, when the judge says to Joe Pesci that the next time, uh, didn't I warn you, the next time that you came into my courtroom dressed like that, you were going to be found in contempt? Yeah. And the sad puppy dog confused look that Joe Pesci got on his face when he said, you were serious about that? That's what this guy got. And he said the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what part of get you out and don't come, come back. back? Don't you understand? So, wow. <laughs> so that was the beginning of my Friday. Throughout the progression of the rest of the shift, I ended up having to deal with every every type of backwards-ass fuck on the planet, including two, uh, which I actually diagnosed later as uh, disorganized schizophrenics. Yep. One guy who, and the staff have absolutely no idea what to do with these people, and I had to explain to them, it's you know, simple, you just let them do their thing, as long as they're not bothering anybody, it's fine. One guy came in, <laughs> oh, yes. the, the first guy that came in, he came in with no, sh no uh, he had shoes on, but he had no socks on. He had like running shoes on with no socks. And his underwear on the outside of his pants. He's, he started to go around the store, he picked up a couple of things, and, you know, I wasn't paying too much attention to it at this point because I know what the whole situation was about. But then... I heard literally from across the store somebody laughing. So I make my way over there to find out what the hell is going on. And the guy is standing there with a jar of peanut butter. And he's laughing at the peanut butter. Like out loud. This goes on for five minutes. <laughs> Saying they're laughing at peanut butter while other people are moving away, moving away and trying to avoid him as much as possible. Don't think I got to make up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, go past that, he paid for his stuff and he left. You know, he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. The problem is we just don't have we don't have the facilities to actually monitor and take care of these people, so they just run loose. And a lot of normal people aren't actually used to it. But the other guy that came in, he came in literally, this this guy was actually, I'm pretty sure he was homeless, though, because he came in with a handmade wooden, wooden cart, push cart, push cart, he was wearing green overalls, uh, gun boots, a reflective vest, and a baseball helmet. <laughs> and he was, <laughs> he was, he was one of those, I remember ones. those guys from Fallout 3. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> never actually thought of that. Neither did I. He's right. <laughs> I just didn't expect to see one with the bomb spell. <laughs> so anyway, that was my that was my sad or my Friday. My Saturday, however, and it was a completely different store in a completely different city. <laughs> this time I was out in Abbotsford at a drugstore. So it's 9 p.m. My shift ends at 11. 9 p.m. I get these two guys come in, two brown guys coming in to the store, and they're your typical Ed Hardy wearing douchebag looking type of guys. So of course I'm on them as soon as they get to the store. I follow these guys around the store for half an hour, and all they've managed to do in this half an hour is annoy the cosmetic girl figure out how the electric toothbrushes work, and begin and find amusement in lifting up the little uh, compartment where the razor blades are and have, have the alarm go off. And have the alarm go off. Doing this over and over and over again. So Lift makes sound. Lift makes sound. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Are they drunk or just stupid? Oh no, they're just stupid. 
So at this point, I'm I was tired of waiting for the management because they usually deal with this stuff. I don't usually deal with it because I'm not supposed to blow my cover as it was. So anyway, I'm I'm just tired of it. So I go deal with them. I get them outside. And I, you know, I don't care what it is you're going to be doing tonight. You're just not going to be doing it here anymore. So I'm not. I can't ban you from the store because you ain't doing anything. But at the same instance, you're annoying an awful lot of people, and you're including me. I got better things to do. Got better things to do than follow you around the store while you play with electric toothbrushes. <laughs> so either buy something or get the fuck out. Pretty much. <laughs> this is when they started to mock me, as most of them usually do. You know, oh, you know, you know, you're just you're just jealous because we're out, you know, doing this and blah 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 and all that. And I'm like, I had to actually stop and reboot the brain for yeah. a second. I'm like, okay, um, let me get this straight. You periodically go to drugstores and play with things and giggle about it. And I'm jealous. At, at nine o'clock on a Saturday night, when there's plenty of other things you could possibly be doing. See, the difference between you and me is I'm paid to be here. You find amusement in this, and I find that really sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Oh, they did a little bit of that before they left, too. Yeah. Did they actually say come at me, bro? No, they didn't say yeah, come at me, bro. The only one who's ever Yeah. No, I have. I do. I have. Okay. I'm not in security, though, and I've had people tell me come at me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, but he also thought you were a nigger, so. <laughs> <laughs> you that, was like, that was a different guy. Oh, that was the same guy. a different guy. She says to the whitest kid she knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, pa- but past all of that, you know, my Sunday was actually relatively normal. But, um, yeah, it's, I just, I, I was dumbfounded for the last two hours of my shift. Well, hour and a half of my shift, because they were walking around the store for half an hour. But it's like, really, you know, because these guys, these, mean that? Do I don't know. Serious? I mean, these guys are like in their early 20s. It's Saturday night, 9 o'clock. There's places to go other than. There are women. Yeah, yeah. There are bottles of booze. booze. You know? these guys. I was either dating or drunk on yeah, a Saturday right. night back when I was 20. You could just sit at home and watching a shitty ass movie. With friends, yeah. Or even a wall whacking it, you know, it's just better than playing with an electronic toothbrush in a fucking sho- shopping freaking. What the fuck? Could be dead. There's this amazing thing that's called the internet. You can get porn on it. <laughs> I guess they found electric toothbrush is more appealing. Uh, you can just go on that website, which is the emergency no button, and listen to that beat. It's more productive. The emergency no button? It's like that scene where Darth Vader yells out no for like five minutes long. No! Yeah. You just press a button and it plays that clip. <laughs> <laughs> Big red button that's all about pages. <laughs> looking at porn on the internet, decided to go and get themselves some tools to help them whack it. And they were looking at the electronic toothbrush upside down, perchance. I don't really know. You know, if you hollow out a cucumber and stick it the toothbrush on the end. <laughs> well, the thing is, Look at it! Girls, pussies don't vibrate, for one! Unless they're having a grand ball! Well, the, the thing is, I mean... If you like that, you're a sick fuck! <laughs> That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> These guys were dead shit That's sober. Just in. Oh. <laughs> These guys were dead shit sober too, from what I can tell. <laughs> and it wasn't even it's, the same they were stretching. <laughs> it wasn't even just the, the whole toothbrush thing. Literally, they have the razor blades in this little compartment on the shelf that, when you open it up, it actually makes a noise so it will actually tell the clerks when you're getting the razor blades out because they have no problem with the theft on that. And it's literally a doorbell sound. It goes ding 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 ding. They sat there for five or ten minutes opening the flap to make it go off and giggle about it. It was the easiest way they knew to get to a flap. Bring, I don't know. Bring someone's <laughs> bell. Did they never have like a scene <laughs> No, no, they were deprived as children. They were ding ding. <laughs> no, <laughs> ding dong. No, no. Here's, here's what I find this. I'm a history nerd, so bear with me here. You, they were brown people, right? Yes. Now, see, once upon a time, India produced the Mughal Empire. Yes. 
the Maharajas of India were immensely wealthy, powerful, well-educated, cultured artists, and masters of all sorts of industries. And this is what they have become. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but look at the rest of society and cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not much has changed. We here on the Uncle Jack Show approve the coming apocalypse. <laughs> Didn't hurt. <laughs> we see it as a I'm actually already worked out a post. Here come it, come it. Here come it, come it. <laughs> this is the gaming voice. That's what I want. Once a week, every week. But we don't hear Scottish voice. Here <laughs> little asteroid. Come smash us to bits. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be made extinct just like the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> All 6,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Tell me you play the dwarf. <laughs> the world's only 6,000 years old. The dinosaurs wiped out 4,000 years ago. Approximately. Approximately. Really? Yeah. I guess you're getting on the inside info working with the uh, Whitehards over there. <laughs> Tryhards, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Some of my co workers are a wee bit. Invisible Manish. Did you know that the Flintstones is a documentary? Well, watching, actually, the amusing thing is, most people I work with, they don't actually, they don't have an opinion because they don't actually know anything. They don't know what stars are. What? Yeah, they, they, like they, have this, they have this vague concept that is you know, an object in space which produces light. Heat, but that's pretty much the extent of their knowledge. They were put there by God, therefore they need not question it. Well, well it's not that. They, when I'm, they, they ask me to explain it to them because they know I'm the hardcore scientist. They don't question what I'm saying. Okay. So it's not hardcore religious. They so you could just be making up shit. Yeah. They would so then William Shatner caught the giant lizard. <laughs> actually, I read something the other day. You realize if you could actually turn them away from, from the faith they're stuck into, you could be the next L. Ron Hubbard. Um, oh, he's got a oh, grin. Oh, 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 I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. I can use the fake religion for my Warhammer. <laughs> a friend of uh, uh, somebody I know on the internet, uh, his niece is, his, his brother and sister, I should say, are religious, and his niece has been coming around. Mm -hmm. And he convinced um, his niece that essentially Jesus, uh, like, beat the Decepticons on, like, uh, the planet Omicron. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an interesting Sunday school shit session. <laughs> if he can't oh, wait till she actually oh, asks, wow. like, her parents about it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I know some real assholes out there. You see, here, I'm going to give this one. This is, this is the kind of person I would like to meet and shake his head and say, You, you, sir, are a master. <laughs> well, see, when I encounter things like that, I, I try and enlighten them. I don't try and be a troll. <laughs> I guess I'm weird like that. These people don't know things. I must help them. Yes. Introduce the world to critical thinking. <laughs> yes. Don't get tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, probably just... No, look at me. I mean, I just had somebody, we were, uh, there was an argument online about uh, who shot first hand at Rita, right? And it was just, yeah. there was oh, this God, talking about that. I know. And so, so you, somebody went, uh, what language are you all speaking? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, on the odd chance, this is not brilliant satirical sarcasm. <laughs> I explained the Anne and Greedo. And the insane of the Lucas. Yes. And... She literally did not know. So you do I'm know there was a trilogy before the trilogy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she had seen the movie. She didn't care. It was a woman in her forties. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. But I didn't care until someone brought it up. I'm just like, yeah, and whatever. It's <laughs> weird minutiae. They do that. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, my hey. only other story okay. is uh, it's a short one, but I, it kind of boggled my mind. It was uh, I did a wedding last night, and. Uh, it, you know, and before we should I, mention that she did it as a DJ, not as the bride or other member. <laughs> well, everyone knows we just got married, so that's already. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you're marrying people once a week. Who knows? It's been three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Can I have another one? Can I have another one? Can I have another one? <laughs> you could be a member of the Mormon Splinter Group. <laughs> <laughs> Where I get a man. 
<laughs> no, see, what we what we do is we, we get a core group of friends, we get married, then we go out of town, get another core group of friends, and then about another year we get married again. <laughs> <laughs> just just keep rolling in the dough. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of marriage as a pyramid scheme. But somehow I'm not surprised. <laughs> We actually need somebody to play the preacher next time. If it exists, we can make a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Go on. Um, but yeah, before I get going on this one, I just find it very amusing that when I got back to the office, another one of our DJs was there, and he had almost the identical wedding as I did. And this, like, we were like, are you serious? Are you serious? This happened to you? Oh my god. So I get there. We just got new equipment. Our new large systems are... We have brand new subwoofers, and we've got these big 50-pound speakers that there's a pole that ties into the top of the subwoofer, and you're supposed to put the speaker on top. Problem number one, I'm too short, and I'm too lazy. That's <laughs> 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 problem number two. Well, no, that's, no, that is problem number one, because I was lucky enough to have a small stage that I was set up on, so I could actually take the speaker from the stage and plop it on top of the subwoofer. But now I could have set up the other speaker. Well, I don't want to put it up on the stage because it's a lowered ceiling above the stage, so I can't put the speaker on the stand without hitting the ceiling. Hmm. I can't put it on the dance floor because I'd either be in the way of the dessert table or it would just look ridiculous or it would be blocking my view or whatever. So I get frustrated and I decide I turn it all down and start over. So I take the speaker off the subwoofer and I take the pole off the subwoofer and I lift up this 50 pound subwoofer, put it on the stage, put the pole on the subwoofer. I'm like trying to figure out how to get the thing on top of the pole. I like even pull out a chair and I'm trying to like carry my 50 pound speaker up on top of the stair to get I'm like, this is You'll not never, good. never thought of you somebody would have trouble putting something on a pole. I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm tired. I hadn't slept much this week and I wasn't really thinking straight. And when, like, when I know the procedure and I know what needs to go where, I'm fine. But when, it's in, when I'm doing it for the first time, I second-guess myself, and I get very nervous. And so, as a result, I ended up setting up my equipment three times. Three times! Before I finally said, fuck it, I'm just putting the fucking speakers on the fucking floor. I fucking had it! But as a result, I was a little frazzled, and I had shown up maybe half an hour early, earlier than I was supposed to. And it was only for this reason that I was almost ready to go... When the MC came up to me and said, Oh, the, the bride and groom are going to be coming in soon. I need the microphone. Um, I, I'm not actually supposed to start for another 20 minutes. So, you may be waiting a little bit, but I promise it won't be 20 minutes. Well, your speakers are here. Yes, but they're not plugged in yet. Oh, well, how long will it take? Could be five minutes, could be 20. Bear with me, I'll be right back to you. So I'm running around trying to plug all my shit in. Long story short, I had some trouble getting the subwoofer to, to hook up sound to the speakers, blah, 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 get it all sorted out. I haven't done my makeup. I haven't even put it on a fit stick. I haven't had a smoke in two hours. But they want to, you know, they, they want to get going. Whatever. Fine. Let's go. Here's the microphone. Here's how to use it. There's, oh, but there's another MC. I have to tell him all this, too. I said, well, why don't you bring him over here? I'll take you both at the same time. So she runs and she gets him. And I run through it. Keep the mic close to your mouth. Don't be all those the people that are doing speeches. On and on and on. Here's how the button works. Fine. I'm going to get the music loaded up for when they walk in. Oh, they have music? I thought we were just going to do speeches. As they're walking in the room, I'm like, well, no, I guess not. Uh-huh. And I look at my paperwork for the first time. They don't even have an entrance song there. <laughs> okay, here's a song. Run. All right, I'm in. So they do the announcements. They walk in. I start playing their cake cutting song because it was my cake song. And they're kind of looking at me funny. Like, why are you playing that? I'm like, what do you want them to do? Crickets? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do you a favor here. Stop giving me the stank eye. Just sit down and <laughs> smile and enjoy yourself. <laughs> So now the MC, the male MC, who has been listening to my instructions very carefully while playing with his smartphone, decides that he's going to start talking. So he's doing the speeches, meanwhile, totally ignoring every rule I gave him. 
can't remember what the button does, can't remember where the button is. He's keeping the microphone 10 feet away from his face, and he's giving me dirty looks when I get feedback or lose his signal because I'm trying to crank it the fuck up to even get anything that he's saying. Keep the mic in your mouth. Stuck on the ball. Get used to it. <laughs> and this goes on and on. And so I'm chasing everyone around all night, giving them directions. This is how it's supposed to be done. You guys are doing your first dance for how long? What's going on? You're losing half your gas. Come on. Up, up, up. Meanwhile, the bride is walking around the entire night with her eyebrows nearly to her fucking hairline like she's wired. And we realized why. Because when I finally got ten minutes after they walked in and did their stupid speeches and did their stupid dinner service and all that, I finally got a chance to go to the bathroom and put on my fucking makeup and I go in there. Almost every single woman at the party was in the bathroom getting shit-faced. Because it was a pay bar and they were charging five dollars a beer, so they'd all snuck in booze. Even the bride. Right from the class. <laughs> what do you want? You want porn stars or, or do you want slippery nipples? And they're like holding flasks. Bottles. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, you have the most together wedding I've ever fucking been to. It was almost as bad as ours. No, ours <laughs> was together. <laughs> so we get there, first dance, ready to go ish. And I'm just, I'm verifying with them because I have no timeline. We're doing the first dances and then the parent dances. Do you want me to introduce, okay, get everyone else to have halfway through the bridal party dance, blah, blah, blah. And um, I'll have your bouquet garter ready to go later in the night whenever you guys are ready. She goes, oh, well, I was thinking about doing the bouquet and the garter first. Which, how is it usually done? I said, well, it can be done either way, but typically you do the first dance first. Okay, great. Thank you so much. She said, insincerely wide eyed, like a deer in headlights. I turn around, the photographer's there. Okay, this photographer has stored all of her gear in my space, used up half of my plugs. I've been talking to her all night about are my lights interfering with your shots? Is there anything I can do for you? I'll let you know when things are happening. I always coordinate. I'm always trying to be helpful and cheery and lovely. And she says to me, are we doing the bouquet first for the garter? And I said, actually, we're doing the first dance. We'll be doing the tossing later. And she goes, how many weddings have you done? And I said, um, I've been doing weddings for 14 years, as a matter of fact. Well, I have never seen it done this way. I don't know why you would do that. Really, it makes absolutely no sense. And at this point, I'm just like, well, oh, man, you're good. <laughs> lose my shit. Seriously, it's bad enough that I'm having to babysit eight unattended children that are doing the usual when there's a stage. Running up the steps and taking flying leaps off, knocking over my life. What, we're talking real children? Real children. Oh yeah. Running around in circles. Ah! With their arms out in the air Just trying to catch the lights. Now, that's fine. Grappling hooks. <laughs> Steam powered grappling hooks. Children. <laughs> Where's Batman? No one was paying attention to these children. I was literally having to like grab them and pull them off of my speakers because they were trying to climb on top of my speakers that were on the ground. Um, I can only imagine what would have happened if I had actually had a speaker on a stand at this wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to end it there. So much hope for humanity. Oh my god. Yeah, right. Uh, <gasps> we're screwed. We're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, that probably wasn't even a way to actually stand up. Um, it was, okay. We're um, lower middle class. Request list, two pages long. One half country, the other half, hardcore techno. There was no middle ground. If I was not playing either Garth Brooks or Dead Mouse, nobody was dancing. But if I played Garth Brooks or Dead Mouse, they were all dancing. And there was not like one group that came up and then sat down when the other came on. No, it was always the same eight drunk people. <laughs> to either Garth Brooks or Dead Mouse? Yes. 
And I would go straight from Garth Brooks, the river, to Death Mouse. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. And uh, yeah, they just kept doing their thing. And everyone else just kind of sat there and picked their nose and complained that I wasn't playing old time rock and roll. And I play old time rock and roll, and they'd still sit on their ass and complain. So I went back to Garth Brooks and Death Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Um, we need to get a phone number. No, well, it, no, it's not connected to any phone we have. You can get a burner. That when you're someplace and, you know, you see something like this, before they have a chance to breathe, you just hit the button. We show up wearing Bella Calavas, put a tarp over the building, and pump in poisonous gas. Yes. Well, we all found the I'm, old I'm, uh, the station wagon. We just we wrapped the cable up in the roof with a rock hammer. <laughs> and we roll out. It doesn't have to be poisonous gas. Just sterilization is bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> turtle. No, no. Oh, I don't want to make it. I figured the flying, flying particles in the air are bullets. <laughs> what handle it? <laughs> well, most people are allergic to bullets. They've got blood on them. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I'm, I'm actually getting quite interested in it. Future career in wet work. <laughs> <laughs> you might say I'm strangely comfortable. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I have one more quick story about the bar. Um, I got the new Sheepdogs album. Absolutely fantastic album. I heard about this. I started playing a whole bunch of their songs on Friday night at Jimmy's. And at the end of the night, these three long haired hippie dudes come walking up. They look like they were barely over the limit. And they say to me, I'm so happy that you played so much of the Sheepdogs tonight. We were so excited. We're actually from Saskatoon, and we know them. And I usually this is a bullshit line, but just in case, say, hey, well, tell your friends that they are fucking amazing, and don't stop doing what you're doing, because I'm so excited to hear this kind of music. And the kid in the front looks at me with these wide eyes and goes, we, well, I'll, I'll tell them what you said, but I won't use the F word, because that's bad. At a bar at one o'clock in the morning. Ah! See, you have to remember, we live on the West Coast. Everything east of the Rocky Mountains is still stuck in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> Until you hit Ontario. You then you go past Ontario. Ontario. <laughs> then the same thing hit Montreal, you get a little bubble. Then you get past Montreal, the same thing again. <laughs> I don't know, what what do we call the negotiated one? I guess I guess we'll just call it the Angosian one. Yeah, the Angosian one. You've met the Angosian. He's only halfway to civilized anyway. He's from Red Deer. Nah. It's all flyover country. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and if you live there, we're sorry, but it's flyover country. It's flyover country. <laughs> <It's laughs> <laughs> I've flown over that job. Oh, that's flyover country. <laughs> <laughs> I looked out the window and go, "This fucking nothing there." <laughs> Thanks for farming the buffalo that I occasionally eat once a year. So I'm especially <laughs> rack and over the way, you know. On that note, everyone, you have a very good couple of weeks. We'll be back and we'll work out all the problems we had. So next time we'll be able to answer a few questions. And next week's question about the next show. Is the next show going to be your Halloween show? Uh, Hi. No, 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 the show after that will be our Halloween show. And it'll also be our 30th episode. 30th episode. Ooh. So. Somebody wrote Hi. Hi. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.